NBC News senior correspondent Tom Brokaw takes a look back at when National Guard troops opened fire on protesting students 50 years ago today. Kent State University, May 4th, 1970. The tragedy that day, like so much back then, was rooted in the war in Vietnam. The trouble started four days earlier with President Nixon's announcement that he was widening the war into Cambodia. American units searching for North Vietnamese troops and installations. But what they will find or how long they will be here, no one can say for sure. Nixon had been elected on a promise to end the war. The invasion of Cambodia triggered a firestorm of protest on campuses across the country. Oh, oh, oh. The administration expressed open contempt for the protesters. Vice President Spiro Agnew. Overprivileged, underdisciplined, irresponsible children of the well-to-do blasé permissivists. And, and the president himself, briefing. in an off-camera we'll remark, picked up by an NBC that. News microphone. You know, you see these bums, you know, blowing up the campuses. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah. the boys that are on the college campuses today are, are the luckiest people in the world. At Kent State, the campus was in turmoil after days of protest. The National Guard was sent in. The students ordered to disperse. They refused. Some threw rocks. The guard used tear gas. Then, without warning, using live ammunition, they opened fire. At least a dozen students were hit. Four were killed. Sandra Scheuer, William Schrader, Jeffrey Miller, lying dead in this unforgettable photograph that made front pages across the country and Alison Krauss, whose grief-stricken father spoke to reporters. She resented being called a bum. She felt that war in Cambodia was wrong. Is this descent a crime? Is this a reason for killing her? A White House statement seemed to blame the students. This should remind us all, once again, that when dissent turns to violence, it invites tragedy. Right! 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 Across the country, protests grew. So did an angry backlash. In lower Manhattan, anti-war demonstrators who had lowered an American flag to honor the dead at Kent State were attacked by pro-Nixon and hard hats. Protesters converged in Washington by the thousands for a massive anti-war rally. Buses ring the White House to keep them out. At a nationally televised press conference that night, almost every question was about Vietnam, Kent State, and the deep division in the country. The president was asked if he would be willing to reach out to student protesters. I would like to try as best I can to do that. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, sometimes uh, they, as you know, uh, talk so loudly that it is difficult to be heard. Just hours later, unable to sleep, Nixon did try, making a surprise pre-dawn visit to the Lincoln Memorial to talk to demonstrators who were camped there. The brief, awkward conversation changed no minds on either side. Kent State was memorialized in song by Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. The tragedy was a shock to the nation. For Richard Nixon, it was a turning point. His own chief of staff later called it the beginning of his downhill slide toward Watergate. But the same week, those four students were cut down. 168 Americans were killed in action in Vietnam and Cambodia, and the war dragged on for another five years. 50 years later, Mika, still just shocking, yeah. unbelievable that college students protesting on campus were gunned down. That was Tom Brokaw reporting, and our thanks to NBC News senior producer Andy Franklin and editor Marshall Hausfeld for putting together that really incredible report, riveting.
Thank you for that, Tom. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.